The Emmaus Road story is recorded in the Gospel of Luke. And one of the ways that you can structure the Gospel of Luke, one of the ways you can see it organized, is around meal scenes. Yeah, all through Luke are these beautiful scenes where Jesus is around a table and something profound happens. The first meal in the Gospel of Luke is when Jesus shares dinner, when he goes to dinner at Levi the tax collector's house. And this is a really big deal. It disrupts all kinds of social norms and religious expectations. The third meal in Luke's gospel is when Jesus feeds 5,000 people from one little boy's lunch. And this is a beautiful scene, and it's miraculous, and it's wonderful, and everybody's just kind of wow about the power of this man. In fact, most of the really profound teaching moments in Luke's gospel happen at a table or around food, where Jesus is sharing a meal with somebody and then takes an opportunity to share something. The seventh meal, or the perfect meal, or the complete meal in the Gospel of Luke is, of course, the Last Supper. It's the last dinner that Jesus shares with his disciple, where he institutes the sacrament of Holy Communion. And then the eighth meal, the eighth meal in Luke's Gospel, or the first meal of the new world, is the Emmaus meal, where Jesus shares bread with the Emmaus travelers. Now, there's a few things about this eighth meal that are really fascinating. First, this is a sacramental meal. In fact, Jesus says the same fourfold pattern in Luke 22, when he institutes Holy Communion, as he says in Luke 24 at the Emmaus meal. What Jesus says, according to Luke, is, or what Jesus does is, he takes bread, he breaks, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it to his disciples. He takes bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it to his disciples. Same things in the seventh meal. He almost cut and paste it, and it appears in the eighth meal. Essentially, Luke is writing that the Emmaus meal is a Eucharistic experience. It's a sacramental, it's a communion-like meal. And then a second thing about the meal is, as a sacramental meal, it's more than just a meal of remembrance. It's a meal of encounter with the real presence of Christ. The Emmaus Road story is very clear on this. On the road, the two travelers are fascinated by Jesus, but it's at the meal when Jesus breaks bread that they discover that their eyes are open and they're able to see who Jesus is and recognize him for the reality of who he is. And it's that recognition of Christ at the meal that really changes them. So first, the meal is a sacramental meal. And secondly, the meal opens the eyes of the disciples so they can recognize who he is. And then finally, the eighth meal is the first meal of the new creation. In other words, this is the first meal anybody ever has with the resurrected Jesus. Now, this is super mysterious, right? But somehow, after physically walking with the disciples, after physically sitting at a table with those two travelers, after physically breaking bread, Jesus disappears, right? It's just completely gone. And the physicality of Jesus from this point on is, is very different. He retains some kind of body. He even retains his scars. He even retains the ability to eat food. But here forward, something about his body is different. He can be in different places really, really quickly. He can walk through locked doors, right? But here's what's so important for us to see, that we who are just so physical, here's what we need to recognize. We are now primarily in relationship with Jesus spiritually, right? But we can still encounter Jesus physically. It's a bit of a mystery, and I don't pretend to fully understand it. But the Emmaus Road story makes this much clearer, that we can encounter Jesus through the breaking of the bread. Yeah, we can still know Christ in the eighth meal 